negotiating strategy of the government going back to January uh, was an epic failure, and it resulted in a humiliation and a catastrophe. This government had no plan. Yeah, there was that's... no plan B. And so the real question is, and it's not a question anymore because there's going to be an agreement, which is, could Greece have defaulted and stayed in the euro? No one will ever know. Could ultimately Greece have withdrawn, even temporarily? Could Greece have refloated its own currency? But you certainly can't do that in two weeks. And so um, it's pretty unambiguous that the country could have had a much better deal mm -hmm. at, at, um, leading up to the referendum, and it got a much worse deal after the referendum. There's a lot of us that believe, and I'm a, a turnaround expert, a restructuring expert, a bankruptcy expert, that the country would have probably been better off had it defaulted and walked away from its obligations. But obviously, um, there's, there's a, a deal that's available to keep Greece today in the euro. So the question is, what happens now? The first thing that has to happen is the right deal needs to be cut. Everybody knows, whether it's Angela Merkel um, or the IMF, which is all of a sudden now as stunningly and suddenly figured out after the, the referendum that Greece cannot pay its debt back, that Greece will never pay this debt back. There needs to be a face reduction in the amount of the debt, something that we would call a haircut, or if a haircut can't be achieved, the debt needs to be termed out for 50 or 100 years, reducing its present value to something that is, that is close to zero. But that just starts the discussion. Greece currently uh, is just not competitive not competitive even with the periphery of Europe, forget Germany. And so this government or the next government is going to have to enact radical reforms. And that starts obviously with tax reform, tax collection, the reform of, of labor laws, contract law, um, and then hopefully the economy can start growing again. Number two, um, the, the demos is going to have to elect and empower government officials that believe in Anglo-Saxon style free market capitalism. It is incomprehensible to me and to really any financier, whether you're in the United States, whether you're in London uh, or anywhere, um, that, that serious people or people that are elected uh, into serious positions can even pay lip service to the fantasy, which is Marxist-Leninism. I mean, you, you almost have to laugh out loud if you're a serious person when a politician references Marx or Engels. As an investor, given the hard situation of the economy, this is not going to change overnight. Do you feel confident to go in a country with such a government and invest there? We have, uh, we operate manufacturing facilities in 26 countries worldwide, so we have a pretty good view of different countries, their political systems, their economic systems, uh, their, their judicial and, and labor regimes. Um, I would not invest in the country today, in any country, Greece or otherwise, where I didn't feel, number one, that I was welcome. So what I mean by that, when I say I, I mean private capital, private equity capital, private investors of any kind. Um, anywhere we go around the world, um, the red carpet is rolled out. Uh, our capital, our expertise, our judgment, and the jobs that we create are welcome. And so first, and, and, and maybe we would be welcomed by the Tsipras government, but we, we would have to be uh, embraced enthusiastically and genuinely by uh, the government. Number two, uh, we would have to have confidence that uh, we're able to quickly, efficiently um, enforce contracts. We are known as, in the United States, as labor's, labor meaning the unions, guys on Wall Street. My firm has spent almost a quarter of a century working in partnership and very constructively with the largest manufacturing and industrial unions in the United States. Walter Ruther, who was the legendary president of the United Auto Workers, said that an employee's best friend is a profitable employer. I believe that good business is good business. Uh, good business incorporates the needs and interests of all stakeholders, which includes capital, 
um, which includes labor, which includes the communities in which uh, we operate our companies. And we have been able over decades to create win-win-win uh, uh, scenarios and environments for everybody. Mm -hmm.